Welcome back to Trains and Planes, uh, where we will learn about trains and probably planes. Okay, so what you're looking at is you're looking at Phil Mora. I know I've recorded this once in the past, but I kind of wanted to show the changes that have happened in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try taking some video. Uh, and what I do is I uh, store everything in the shared media, but I'm going to take you through this a step at a time and show you how to build a video for your train YouTube channel just using Filmora. So uh, basically you've got your menu up here so file, new project, and then you get 16 by 9 um, or you could do 4 by 3. If you're using a GoPro, the GoPro is going to default by 4 by 3 um, so you're gonna have to play with your GoPro settings to get that and I've created what I called a epic filter where I've got a widescreen and uh, you know 4k. I may start doing that as a 5k we'll see it just means I'd have to get a bigger card the other things you have is open projects and it gives you a least you know a list of your other projects you've done in the past import media um, I'm gonna explain to you how to do that in a second and record from your record from your PC screen which is what I'm doing right now let me show you I got the open recorder this is the recorder right here showing what I've been recording so I've been almost two minutes now this is the Filmora 11 beta. Uh, Filmora lets me try the betas and I send them some feedback. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build the train videos. So what I do is I import everything into uh, shared folders. I've got a couple here that are just for me. Um, I've got my Flintstone sound effects which I used to do a lot of. Now I, I haven't done those that much in the last year but I, every now and then I do them. Uh, space effects. These are really interesting. So like I can put one of these up there and you'd see you know this is what it looks like sparks film leaders and then I put all of my stuff in captured video so if I were to scroll down here and grab a train video um, so let's just grab this one and drag it down and that's how you do it match to media Lou, thank you so here I've got, this is a video, and then what you can do is you can grab some music, like I can take, uh, there's a bunch of music here. You can also go right to your audio, which is various, so we can drag this down there. This is music that Filmora gives you for free. Now what you do here, and this is very, very useful. I actually don't do this and I'll show you what I do instead, but let's go to uh, our audio, adjust audio, lower the volume of other clips. I don't do this th very much and I'll show you why. So this drops it down to here and notice here's the curve, it's showing my video, but let's play it and you'll see why I don't do this. I'm hoping Phil Moore has actually fixed this because this would save me a lot of time. So here's the So there it is with everyone in there. Now I just got to get the roof on. Okay, so actually it looks like they fixed it, which that'll, that'll save me a lot of time. So that's all you have to do is follow those steps and it reduces your music in the background. Normally what I will do is I will go over here and I'll scroll past and I'm gonna give you some fast keys that you wanna know. So this is Control B to break that. Now let's go to here to the volume and this is normally what I do. You'll see it gives me zero normally what I do stop thank you I need that so I will go down to about depending on what the volume is I'll go down to about negative 21 or so but let's see how it is right here so that's negative 25 and that's usually where I put so let's see how and it is to get this thing put together again that's actually what works best for you is uh, I guess they fixed that now so I used to just automatically put it somewhere around between negative 21 and negative 25 depending um, Filmora has a quirky little thing that the volume you hear the music at when you're editing is usually quieter than what it renders at and what I mean by that is when you build your video you're gonna find your background music actually ends up uh, about 
you know two tenths of a decibel louder than what it is in your when you're editing. So it's you're going to hear the background music a little louder. And this is what happened the last time I did a how to do Filmora. So and this is just most of this is basically on how I organize this. So you'll you'll look over here in my media. This is also stock media, and that's you know like here's water, and you, all you have to do is just click to download it, and you can use it. So if you need that, there you go. If you need a Santa, there you go. Um, but this is something new they've added in this version of Filmora, and they never really had it before. So let's go over here. And I uh, sometimes I'll use industry terms. So like the intro to my channel is called a bumper. So I'll go over here and I'll grab it and slide it right there. And you can see there's my st this is my stock video. What I've downloaded uh, it all is basically stuff I've got there. So let's go over here and let's show the first thing I would do is I click your stop. So there's the standard Trains and Planes logo. So there it is. Now, some helpful things to keep in mind is watch your waveforms and where you have so, um, and the, and a long pause. Those are, you're clearing your throat, in other words. So what I would do here is just control B to break that. Click on the part that you don't need anymore and just hit the delete button. So there's various different ways, control X to delete, you know, con to control V to paste, control B to break. So, and now what you'll end up doing is at the end here, we're going to control B, and then, now let me drag my line there. Now you'll see how when I mouse over here, you'll see this little thing right there, that's my tab. So now when I put this here, all right, well, now let me tune out for now and we'll come back and deal with this tomorrow. Do it the same thing and drag it to where the other one starts. So now we're going to go here. All right, well, now let me tune out for now and we'll come back and deal with this tomorrow. So that'll give you, that drags out your video, uh, the audio on your narration. We're going to go to transitions and I have some transitions that are that I use a lot so I've got them listed under favorites dissolve let me show you a dissolve uh, control B you'll have to hit that to render it go here very difficult um, I gotta f and because this is let me uh, take this let me undo that control Z Control B because I want a difference in the screen. So now we're going to do the dissolve, and you should see it now. Render it. Very difficult. Um, feeling no one's going to stay there. Did you see that right there? You'll see a slight difference there to there. See the little outlines right here. This is where it's literally fading from one to the other. Now, if you double click on your fade, if you didn't get it in the right spot, you can prefix it which moves it to the front you can post fix it or you can do overlap I always do overlap now in case I did an um or an and or a cough in the middle uh, I will uncheck the include trimmed frames and that will actually cut that section just a little bit and fade and here's what ends up happening as you get this very difficult um, feeling no one's gonna stay there or did you hear how it took out part of a word there so what I could do is go back in there and edit out that um, and then hit that. Now when we want to put this here to fade, fade is fade to black. I'm going to render. So now we've faded the audio here. We faded this here. So now we click our cursor here. And we'll, now let me tune out for now. And we'll come back and deal with this tomorrow. And again, remember, if you cut this here, control B, hit delete. And again, drag your little tab there so you're fading your sound. All right, this is basically how I edit my videos. Just place it somewhere, and if you can, if you don't highlight a section in Control B, it cuts both. I try to avoid that. Just keep that in mind that when you're going to cut something, the your best practice 
Your best practice is actually to add in your audio, the music that you're going to have in the background behind here. So let's talk now about, you know, if we're going to do, go back to media. I'm going to go back to my captured video. And let's see if I can find one that's just a train running. So this this will help you to understand the layers concept. Is uh, I don't think I have any videos that are just a train running. Maybe this is it. Yeah, so let's go ahead and drop this one in here and I'll show you how this works. All right, if you hit this button, this reduces your workflow, what you're actually seeing, to just the length of the video. So here's the higher up in your video frame you have this, this becomes everything that targets this. So if I wanna take this video, I can take this Click on here and reduce this video down in case you need to have a screen and screen. You know, you want to reduce that in size. Um, remember your rules of thirds, by the way, is that on your screen, what you're looking at here, the eye is drawn to things that are on the intersection of a third. So if you cut this video here and here, your eyes are going to be drawn to right there or right there, or right there, or right there. And the reason I'm clicking on those is to show you that is where your eye gets drawn to. It's called the rule of thirds. It's done a lot in photography school. So let me show you if we just take this whole thing all the way out, drop down a video thing, and let me mark off, go do a quick render. Render just is building a preview file so that you can see what it looks like. When we actually make the film, you're going to go to export, and that will do what is called a full render. All right, so we're going to get this the cursor to right about two minutes, 206, 205, 204, to right up here at two minutes. Here, control B, cut that off, transition, fade. Then you want to get your audio right there. Got to move this out of the way to do it. and bring your audio fade right to the video fade. Again, a preview render. Of course, it helps if you have this since you cut the other part out. Now it's not picture in picture. You want to get it to where it's full size. So you see what happens when you draw the audio back to the same spot the actual fade is. I got to do a background render again. You're going to be doing a lot of background renders. And usually when you're done with a video, there's something you're desperately going to want to do is go up here to File, Delete, Preview, Render, Files. Because you can fill up your entire hard drive uh, in just a matter of... of a couple of weeks of editing and do this. So why did I choose two minutes for a train running video? It's because viewer attention span. If all I'm doing is running train without any narration. You can hear the music, the bass and the music there is a little overpowering. And that's why normally I will grab this thing and I will drag it down even more. Better, better yet, when you're running trains, here's my recommendation. No, no background audio at all. Just run your trains. Now, if you're the kind of person where you have a small layout and it's just loops and you're not changing your track at all, you're not doing any kind of changes. You're just leaving the camera in one spot, which I almost never do. I try to do it so that the train takes up the majority of the screen. Control B, move the camera. Hello, move the camera. Hello, what was I doing? Okay, right there, train's in the scene. What's interesting to me is how blank this looks now because I have 
you know, I've got that building right there. I've got the hospital right there. And now I've actually got, you know, the, the manufacturing plant right there. Now I've got, you know, some accessories over here. And coming in soon, I'm going to have some uh, accessories in the train yard. So everything looks much different on my layout right now. So it's almost embarrassing to look back at the videos and say, wow, people were watching this when I had nothing. You know, it's very gratifying to see that people want to do that. However, keep this in mind. If you have a small layout and you run your trains really fast because you're doing, you know, conventional, and there's nothing wrong with that. I find the majority of what I watch is people running conventional trains um, on small layouts because I'm, I'm actually kind of bored with watching large layouts. I, I don't have a large layout. There's, I'm never going to have a large layout. I'm not interested in large layouts. Yeah, it's wonderful to see what someone can do in a museum, but I don't have a museum. So I don't even watch it because I'm not even interested. So small layouts, you got a 4x8, 5x9, 6x10, I'll watch your video. I'll watch your video many times. But keep this in mind. When you're running it really fast and all you have is loops of track, do this. Go to about there. You want to watch right here and get that to about 60. Do that and render your video. And I'm saying that because I, I find that the videos I watch that where people don't have turnouts, it's just loops of track. My interest is, in, is about 60 seconds of it and I think yours is too. Now if you've got turnouts and your trains take different routes, that's different. You know, you'll see I've got turnouts right there. So that means the train can go this way, the train can go that way because i got the X at the center, you know, the diamond. And i got a couple different routes. I'm still thinking about this streetcar track. I haven't, I haven't made up my mind. I had taken it off there, but I keep thinking about it. So we'll see what happens. But I've got scenery now in the way, so I don't know. We'll see. But ideally, this is what we want to see. We either want to see a panoramic view of your train layout, or I want to see up close. And this is what people want. And so the more you do this, the more people are going to watch your videos. And again, there's nothing wrong with the guys that have the four ovals that don't connect, don't have crossovers, don't have turnouts. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of people who want to watch those. So... Feel free and make videos of your layout where you do that. I'm, I'm excited. You know, keep, keep doing that. But just keep your videos down to about one minute or so. You'll find your views are going to increase drastically. Um, if you're having a train running on your layout and you have turnouts, you've got, you know, Lion Chief or you're using Legacy or etc. You can go up to two minutes, maybe three minutes. Cut the videos off after that and just put up, you know, part two, part three, part four, part five. You'll find your views increase drastically. So uh, just keep those things in mind. And then there's different things you can do with it. Like you can put in, uh, let's go to my titles here. I've already shown you the audio. I've already shown you the stock media and some of those are new. And here's something to keep in mind. You click on the little grid there and that gives you filters. So let's go to free. And these are all the ones that I can put in. I've got a lot of titles here that I've got. Recommend, you know, this is under their recommendeds. And as you can see, like this one, I don't even have downloaded yet. That was what that arrow is right there. So if I want that one, then I just might want that one. I have all kinds of... Now it's downloaded to my computer. I have all kinds of titles here that I don't have downloaded. Wait, some of these I downloaded. Mmm... So I can go to favorites right here. There's a little problem right there. I, I don't know what the problem is, but let's just say I want to put a text thing. I'll drag it right here, double click on it. Now it's going to give you the uh, lorem ipsum, which is just generic Latin placeholder stuff. I'm just going to put test. Now, when you're doing a different one, like this one, this has text. That's okay. Let's try something different. I want to go to advanced. And I do this with all of my text that isn't inside that black box. The black box is just, that's for when I want it faster. I'm in a hurry, i got to get this done. So 
I don't like this purple thing. I don't know why Filmora defaults to that. Maybe a lot of people do. Now I've reduced it to all black with a drop shadow. The text shadow is right here. And that puts a little shadow right down there. Without it, notice how it stands out. It's got that shadow. I put the text border on. It stands out even more. I think the text border is a little big, so I'm going to put that at 3. Click OK. Preview render. OK. Alright, since I'm not really making this as a video. So, Revenge of the Title Text is what I put in there. And you saw it just background rendered all on its own. So, and this one here is actually a stock uh, Filmora title that I just edited and put in my trains and planes and etc. And I got a, you know, so I've got several other ones. In case you're wondering, the this is the default title I use. Your title here. Blah, 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 part two. And again, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to scroll down, text shadow, text border, black, three. Okay. And because I'm a really big believer in Filmora, Why do, I, why do I believe in Filmora? I have used a lot of video software. I've used professional stuff. I actually know how to use some professional stuff. Uh, but, you know, like DaVinci Resolve. Uh, DaVinci is really good and gives you very good quality. The only problem, really, is that it takes forever to do anything. And I found out if, if I wanted to... I was, it was taking me three days to make my first video, and I was, I was like, I, I can't use a workflow that is this slow, this long, this much work. And so I just found myself grabbing Filmora all the time to do all my work with. Or if I have to put a video filter in there, that would be under effects or elements. There's a lot of effects I can do here. Um, I do this to the video before I actually edit it. So again, go to your filter, go to free, Unless you're paying for Filmora, unless you've got a subscription there. So let me go to my favorites and I'll show you some. There's image masks, there's uh, tilt shift. When I need something in black and white, I'm going to go to Willow. Um, and I've done this thing from time to time where <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll uh, go to this and you put it right on there. Let me show you what happens. And now it looks like it's, you know, a vintage film. Control Z to get rid of that. And then my final result would be to go here and give it a title. Usually I will save every step I got, and that creates a problem later on. You're going to have to go into your temporary files and delete all of the backups because that you know from each step you'd make. But I've just learned the hard way never to do a project <coughs> and not save every step I do because that way it's easier than an undo. Um, in case the computer crashes because of a power outage or a brownout, you know, and everything shuts down. So we're just going to call this uh, test video footage. And I know I'll get rid of it. Now you can change the settings. Let's make this. So we're now in 4K. And this would be 5K. We're now in 4K. I like 23.97 frames a second. A lot of people will do 30 or 29.97s. This is cinematic speed, and it gives you a certain quality that you're looking for. And the rest of this, it automatically does. Now, GoPro shot. This is new, so I've, I haven't experimented with this. Let's try that. It's not giving me the little... Uh, this is a help thing. You click on it. Adjust the video quality taken by GoPro. So I got the quality on high. Resolution is uh, 4K. The audio, the frame rate is 2.97. And you want your audio 
I'd leave it at 44 and 192 because these are defaults that when you go to high and you're and keep it on that. You can do MPG4, you can do H264. H264 is actually YouTube default. So now I'm going to click that. You'll see everything there. It's going to be almost a full gigabyte. It's 1.46, and if you wanted to edit that down, so make sure you have this checked. Enable GPU accelerated video encoding. I have a gaming computer. I don't really game. I bought it actually for my YouTube channel because I do a lot of video editing. I mean, I'm sometimes editing two or three times a week. So here's the last step. Export. Look at how quick that's going. This is edit, rendering the whole video. I don't even have enough time to get up and go get a cup of coffee. What? Now I can go to open folder and I have a built-in render folder which is called renders and there's my test footage one and I'm just going to go ahead and delete that because I was just yes because I was just showing you how to do it. <clears throat> okay a couple more things just so you know. Um, they have a lot of effects things. And these are all new, these Boris FX. So you can click more. I don't have those new blue FX. I don't know what those are. So these are all new with uh, Filmora 11. So jump in there and find out. What's new? Right there. And they, you know, it'll give you, it'll update all that and let you see what it is. Remember when you're trying to see what your filters are <clears throat> to save on memory, it's not going to put them all in memory. So just keep scrolling down until it stops filling. And you'll know because you can't drag it down anymore. And it'll gradually give you what the trending. I don't know what metaverse is, but I don't have access to any of those. So what I do is I've got several favorite effects and I showed you what those are elements let's go to those elements now elements is where it gets interesting because I have several fav favorite ones okay again free those are ones that I own or so this is subscribe that's subscribe too it's actually taken some of my favorites out which is kind of annoying uh, Christmas emojis, intense fog. I can actually throw some fog right on that. And then you click on that and drag it down. Let's preview render it. And actually you see a fog rolling across it. Pretty good if you have a music video, if you're trying to do a creepy video or something. And uh Believe it or not, they actually have, among all these things that you can get downloaded, you can, you know, they'll put them all in there. What's new? Now remember, I'm on the free filter, so it's not going to show everything. Recommended, trending, metaverse, we went through all those. There's nothing in the uh, metaverse that's free. Basic, stickers. These are ones that you can actually sticker on to a video. I don't, I don't do too much with that. Backgrounds. This is something, this is new, but those are green screen backgrounds that you can get. You have to get a film stock subscription to, to take advantage of those. Arrows. Yeah, I use these a lot. These are tutorial uh, uh, arrows. Emojis. I don't do. Okay, with virtual effects. Fire, explosion, smoke. Again, these are all with a... If I was to take the filter off, go to standard. Now you can see... Yeah, I just downloaded that and I didn't want to because I can't use that. Um, just remember, if you click on it, you're going to download it, which is kind of annoying. Memes. I don't use those. Gaming. Again, don't use those. Go to free. Really? And so far, so good. All right. And really, just go through and find what you like that's in your license 
And when you go to film stock, you're going to see a lot. Um, a lot of those I don't use. Now, these are the Kung Fu ones. Those I own. Uh, that was like this one. I can throw that one in there. Poof! Wah! And I've done a couple of those just because they're fun. And split cre split screens. Um, so that you could throw this on the thing right there. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to link in three videos into your split screen. Like that. So, did you see how I did that? I put, I put, moused over this, and then I just dragged this one to the third one, this one to the first one, this one to the middle, and now I have. Put everyone in there. Okay, so basically that's how it works. Is it's, it just loads it in, you play it, and you can adjust your volumes, etc. Um, a couple more things I could show you, and here's something to keep in mind. Go to Project Media, and that gives you just what you've got in your project. <clears throat> and that's pretty much about it. Um, there are a lot of different things you can do with it. One of the first things that will take you a long time is to go through all your stuff and add in, you know, in your shared folders, add in all the stuff you use. Like if you look here, you'll actually see my audio. I have over 6,000 audio files that I have in my library. And it's kind of annoying because, you know, I most of them I don't even use. So there are some here that I use a lot. There are some here I almost never use, like this emergency security. That's a cool sound effect, but if I was doing video work and this was Foley, then, yeah, I'd be using a lot of that. And, you know, I may get into that someday. But right now for my train layout, I don't need that. All right. So there you go. Comment, like, subscribe. Uh, leave comments and anything else you'd like to see. Um, this is my recommendations for Filmora 11. This is the, again, the beta edition. And I really recommend Filmora. I've used it for a long time. And I recommend you give it a try and experiment with your videos. Sorry this one was so long, but just let me know if you have any questions about Filmora, about video editing. I tried to do this as quickly as I could and just rush through a lot of the features. Um, and just let me know what you think. And we'll see you next time.